It's Saturday evening, and you're a sad postman who has to deliver the mail throughout a neighborhood. You must first pick up the mail, then walk through each of the streets in order to deliver the mail, finally returning to the post office. You're tired and want to complete the route quickly so you can get home and rest for the night. You have a map of the neighborhood and the total length of each road in meters shown. How can you minimize the distance traveled and deliver all the mail as efficiently as possible? Chinese mathematician Quan Mei Ko proposed this problem in 1960, dubbed the Chinese postman problem in his honor. This problem can be solved with graph theory, so let's take a step back and learn a bit more about graphs to tackle this problem. In the Chinese postman problem, also known as the route inspection problem, we want to find the most efficient path to help the tired postman. This problem can be represented with a graph that includes edges and vertices. In this case, the neighborhood would be the graph, each intersection would be a vertex, and each street would be an edge, with the houses lining the streets. The ideal scenario for a postman would be to travel each street exactly once before returning to the post office. If we can traverse every edge exactly once and finish at the starting vertex, we would have what's known as an Eulerian graph. But how do we figure out if a graph is Eulerian without just guessing and checking? For this, we will need to look at the degree of each vertex, which is the number of edges attached to a specific vertex. If the graph has vertices that are all of even degree, the graph is Eulerian. That works, but why? Well, if you have a vertex of degree 2, then you have two edges connecting to that vertex, one edge to go in and one edge to go out. Therefore, if you have an even number of edges connecting to an intersection, you never have to travel an edge twice to pass through that intersection. However, if you have a vertex of odd degree, then you have a way to reach the intersection, but no way to leave it without traveling along one of the connected streets twice. If the graph has exactly two vertices of odd degree, the graph is semi-Eulerian. Semi-Eulerian graphs are similar in that you can traverse every edge once, but different in that you cannot start and finish at the same vertex. And if the graph doesn't fit either criteria, then it's just a regular graph. It's not Eulerian at all. Oh, I see. If the neighborhood could be represented by an Eulerian graph, that would be fabulous. Wow. And now that we know a bit more about graph theory, we can start to build our postman's path. Let's start with a smaller neighborhood with just four intersections, or vertices, and four streets, or edges. Seeing that each vertex has an even degree, we know that the graph is Eulerian. From there, we can quickly find the best path for our postman by just sketching out different paths until we find one that works. Knowing this route, our postman is able to quickly deliver the mail and rest for the night. In this neighborhood, the postman can travel from the intersection A to B to C to D and then back to A to traverse each edge. We can go back to our original neighborhood and use the same method to help our postman. From this, we get the path A, B, C, D, E, G, H, F, D, A, and the postman is able to complete the route quickly and rest for the night. This is just one of several paths which have the minimum weight of 136. As long as the graph is Eulerian, there are more possible routes for our postman. The next day, the postman has to deliver the mail in a different neighborhood. We already know that if the graph is Eulerian, we can easily find a route for the postman. But we count the degrees of each vertex and find that two of the vertices have odd degrees. What do we do now? Unfortunately, not all neighborhoods will be Eulerian. Sometimes our neighborhood is semi-Eulerian with two vertices of odd degree, so we'll have to repeat some edges. But also, since it's semi-Eulerian, we only have to repeat the path between the two vertices of odd degree. Think of it as adding an extra edge between those two odd vertices. With this extra edge, each of these vertices degrees increase by one, thereby making those values even. And now, since all the vertices will have an even degree, we can create an Eulerian path. In this scenario, the postman can go from A to B to D to F to E to B to D to C to A. This path has a distance of 370 meters. Okay, so after delivering the mail in the semi-Eulerian neighborhood, our postman moves on to the next one. Sometimes we are in a neighborhood like this one that neither has an Eulerian nor a semi-Eulerian graph, so we'll have to be more careful about how we minimize the weight of the route we take. Similar to our method in the last neighborhood, 
we can reduce the workload by finding the shortest possible routes between all the vertices of odd degree. That's right. Let's first identify all the vertices of odd degree. We can write this in a chart. Then, since the postman is traveling on the edges, we want to find the shortest route between all the vertices. We can start by writing out all the pairings of the start and end vertices. Going down the list, we can identify the shortest route and make note of the weight and the path we took. Oh, so for example, in this neighborhood, to get from A to D, the shortest route is actually by going from A to C to D, with weight of 7. This is shorter than going directly from A to D, which has a weight of 8. Yup. After completing the chart, we'll repeat the combination of the shortest pairings that would get us through all the odd vertices, which are AB and DE. And since we need to go on every street, we can find the weight of all the edges, then add on the combination of the shortest pairings, yielding the shortest route. With this information, we can find the shortest path throughout the entire neighborhood, and it's an easier day for the postman. For example, A, B, A, C, B, E, C, D, E, D, A. What about a bigger neighborhood, town, or city? In larger neighborhoods, it would be easier to use the chart method since manually inspecting different possible routes would take a millennium and our postman would run out of life savings. Instead of manually drawing out each path, it would be easier to find the shortest path between the vertices. So how would we solve it for even larger scenarios? We can implement the chart method by using technology to find these graphs. The basic steps for doing this have us find the nodes of odd degree, find the minimum distance pairs, compute the shortest paths between the node pairs and the minimum weights, and ultimately reach the solution. All our friends as postmen help us introduce us to the field of graph theory, which we just skimmed over with the complex relationships with vertices and edges in Eulerian graphs. And graph theory is iconic, 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 and particularly valuable to a variety of fields. There are a couple notable applications that come with graph theory in general. In computer science, graph theory is interwoven in the organization of websites and link structure. Subpages can be graphed using a directed graph, a graph that uses arrows to show one-way directions, as shown here in a website visualization. Graphs can help create flight paths for aircrafts. Vertices can represent airplanes and edges as paths of travel in the sky. In chemistry, graphs can represent molecules, which allows scientists to see the bonds between atoms and the shape of the molecule better. Shown here is the molecular graph of penicillin. In biology, graph theory can illustrate and help organize complex migration patterns with the vertices as geographic locations or population centers and edges as the species movement or paths of migration. For example, we can use graphs to model migration patterns, as seen on the screen, which helps scientists observe how certain species evolve, as done with juncos at UCSD. As you can see, graph theory is incredibly iconic, useful with its applications, and surprisingly fun, even with something as simple as delivering mail. Next time you see your postman, don't forget to tip them. And a thank you to our math teacher, who inspired us to pursue this math topic.